Imagine a saber tooth. You probably picture a giant cat like Smilodon stalking the Ice Age. But the first saber-toothed predators weren't cats or even mammals. They lived millions of years before the first dinosaur ever walked the Earth. In the rocks of Mallorca, Spain, scientists found the fossil skull of a predator with saber teeth. Cone-shaped, dagger-like fangs. This creature was named Gorgonopsian malarsensis, a top predator from the Permian period 260 million years ago, 40 million years before dinosaurs. The saber-toothed blueprint is ancient. A strategy evolution would revisit again and again. Gorgonopsians were the apex predators of their time. The lions of the Permian world. They belonged to the synapsids, the group that would eventually give rise to mammals including us. This ancient saber-tooth is a distant, terrifying relative. Its skull was a mosaic of primitive and advanced features, especially the jaw. Unlike modern mammals, its lower jaw was made of several bones, a clue to one of evolution's greatest transitions. Some of these jaw bones were beginning a journey that would end inside our own heads. Over millions of years, these bones would become part of the mammalian ear. This fossil isn't just a monster. It's a signpost on the long road to becoming human. The story of Gorgonopsian malarsensis rewrites what we know about saber-toothed predators. It shows that the roots of our own evolution stretch back to a world before dinosaurs. The saber-tooth design was so effective, it kept coming back in new forms. Our own story begins with these ancient saber-toothed hunters. The ghost in the rock is part of our family tree. To understand the Gorgonopsian, you have to understand its world, the Permian. All the continents were joined as Pangaea, creating vast, hot, dry interiors and strange forests of extinct plants. Gorgonopsian malarsensis was a top predator, about the size of a large dog, built for speed and agility. Its prey were other synapsids, plant eaters that were the cattle of the Permian. The Gorgonopsian's saber teeth delivered quick, devastating bites. Its jaw was made of multiple bones, unlike the single-boned jaw of modern mammals. Two of these bones, the articular and quadrate, formed the jaw joint. Over time, evolution repurposed these bones. They detached from the jaw and became the malleus and incus, the hammer and anvil of the mammalian middle ear. Every time you hear a sound, you're using the repurposed jawbones of a Permian predator. This evolutionary leap connects us directly to the ancient world of saber teeth. The story of the Gorgonopsian jaw is a profound link between our senses and our deep past. Evolution's tinkering turned a killer's jaw into the tools of hearing. The Gorgonopsian ruled the land, but life's conquest of land began much earlier. For most of Earth's history, the continents were barren. The real action was in the oceans. In the Cambrian, Anomalocaris was a super predator of the seas. But the next leap came in the Devonian, the age of fishes with Tiktaalik, a fish with the beginnings of wrists and elbows. Tiktaalik could prop itself up on muddy riverbanks, bridging water and land. Why move to land? not just to escape drying ponds, but to escape aquatic predators and find new food, early insects and invertebrates. This invasion of land was messy and slow, but it changed everything. Tiktaalik and its kin were pioneers, taking the first steps onto a new world. Every land animal from dinosaurs to Gorgonopsians to us descends from these brave fish. Their journey made possible the rise of all terrestrial life. The conquest of land was one of evolution's boldest experiments. We owe our existence to these ancient pioneers. Once life took hold on land, it exploded especially during the Carboniferous when vast, swampy forests covered the world. These forests birthed coal and were home to giant arthropods, millipedes, insects, and more. The king of the undergrowth was Arthropleura, a millipede over two meters long. Once thought to be a plant-eater fossil, Evidence shows it was a predator hunting early amphibians. How did arthropods get so big? 
The secret was in the air oxygen levels were much higher than today. Their inefficient breathing system was supercharged, letting them grow to terrifying sizes. For millions of years, vertebrates were small and vulnerable, living in fear of giant bugs. The balance of power was reversed arthropods ruled and our ancestors hid in the shadows. This era shows just how different the ancient world was. The rules of life were still being written. For a time the bugs were the giants and vertebrates were the prey. The reign of the arthropods was a unique chapter in Earth's history. It ended as the world changed, but its legacy remains. The Permian world was vibrant, but it was about to end in catastrophe. Around 252 million years ago, the planet faced the greatest extinction event ever, the Great Dying. Massive volcanic eruptions in Siberia unleashed lava and greenhouse gases, triggering runaway global warming. Oceans turned acidic and lost oxygen. Forests died under acid rain. Life was pushed to the brink. Fossils of Enostrancivia, a giant saber-toothed Gorgonopsian, reveal a desperate migration from Russia to South Africa as its world collapsed. Inostrankevia was a refugee, trying to outrun extinction, but it didn't survive. The Great Dying wiped out 96% of marine species and 70% of land vertebrates. The mighty Gorgonopsians vanished forever. The world fell silent, but in that silence, new life would rise. The extinction cleared the stage for the dinosaurs, the end of the Permian was both a tragedy and a turning point. Life's resilience would shape the next era. The survivors would become the ancestors of new dynasties. The story of the Gorgonopsians ended, but evolution marched on. From the ashes, the age of dinosaurs began. While Gorgonopsians hunted on land, the skies belonged to giant insects. The most spectacular was Meganeura, a dragonfly with a wingspan as wide as a hawk's. Meganeura was an apex aerial predator, snatching prey mid-flight with spined legs. High oxygen levels allowed insects to grow enormous, breaking normal size limits. The Permian was a high-energy, high-oxygen world, fueling an evolutionary arms race. But as oxygen levels dropped, the giants became vulnerable. The age of giant insects ended as the atmosphere changed. Their story is a reminder change the air and you change life itself. The rise and fall of these giants was tied to the planet's chemistry. The world of giant insects faded, but their legacy remains in today's much smaller flyers. Evolution's experiments are written in the fossil record and in the air we breathe. The story of ancient predators, Gorgonopsians, giant dragonflies, armored millipedes, feels like a journey to another world, but their legacy lives on in us. The synapsids, ancestors of mammals, survived the great dying by clinging to life in the shadows. They carried the blueprint for warm-bloodedness, hair, and the unique jaw structure that became our hearing apparatus. The saber-toothed killers of the Permian are part of our deep family tree. Every time you shiver or hear a sound, you're using adaptations forged in that ancient world. We are the inheritors of their survival and their evolutionary experiments. The fall of the Gorgonopsians wasn't the end, just a long intermission before mammals rose. The ghost in the rock is our ancestor. The story of life is one long, continuous narrative, and we carry echoes of that lost world inside us.